is section 5.1. So we're going to talk about triangle mid segments. And based on what we did with our, our little folding activity, the, the, the word mid segment hopefully makes a little sense in terms of what we did. So we're going to call what we this, our big idea for today is called the Triangle Mid-Segment Theorem. The name, the name is not really important. I'm not, not really worried about the name. Um, but the book likes to give everything names. So the Triangle Mid-Segment Theorem tells us that the segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel what we saw in our activity is parallel to the third side and half as long. The third side being the side that we didn't put the segment between. So we put the segment between two sides and it's parallel to the side that's, that's not. So let's draw a picture. So our triangles look more or less like this. All right, so I'm going to label my triangle A, uh, A, B, C. I'm going to call this point D and this point E. And I'm going to join those up. All right. So we're going to say that D is the midpoint of this side. So what does the midpoint do to, our, to the side of the triangle? Splits it in half. So how does the length AD compare to the length DC? The same. Perfect. So let's mark those congruent. That's how we tell it's in the middle that the segments on either side of the midpoint are the same. And we're going to say that E is the midpoint of CB. So how do E, segment EB and segment CE compare? They're congruent. So we're going to mark those congruent. So that tells us that these points are the midpoints. Segment DE is the mid-segment. The segment is right in the middle of those sides. So we call DE is a mid-segment. And we're going to say that segment DE is parallel to the side that's not joining. So segment parallel to segment AB. And remember we mark parallel with arrows. So DE is parallel to segment AB. And the length of DE, remember when we just write the two endpoints of the segment without the bar over the top, we're talking about the length, equals one half the length of segment AB. So that would be our, our picture. So when we folded our when we folded our, our triangle up we ended up with a fold right along that mid segment. And we saw that this was parallel to this side. And it looked like it should be about half as long. What's another way of saying that segment DE, how's an, what's another way we could say segment DE is half as long as segment AB? How would we turn that around? We would say, yes? 
So that's what that's what we said here. A B divided by two is B E. A B is two times bigger than D E. So the other way we could say that is A B equals two times D E. Those two things mean the same thing. A B divided by two gives us D E. One half is the same as dividing by two. And two times D E gives us A B. So to get the longer segment, we need to multiply. To get the shorter segment, we need to divide. <coughs> All right, questions? Um, all right, questions, questions on what the triangle mid-segment theorem is telling us. The idea is if this segment joins the midpoints of these two sides, these two, each of these is cut in half, then it's parallel to the third side, and segment DE is half as long as this side. That's what we saw in our little... Now, the way we prove this, it's kind of not, not complicated, but we, we use coordinates. So we would use the slope of these two segments, and we would plot the points, use the slope, to show that the slope was the same, which would mean they were parallel. We would use the distance formula to find their lengths, to show that the length of segment DE is half the length of segment AB. And we could find the midpoints of these sides by using the midpoint formula. So that's where that, that's how we would figure all of this out. But we're gonna, for today, we're just gonna do some, a couple of other things. All right, so let's look at some examples. Um, so let's draw a picture here. And I'm going to put some points on these sides. So. And let's call this big triangle, triangle D, E, F and this O, M, and N for the vertices of a small triangle. And I'm going to mark it like so. And the question asks which segments are parallel? Well, let's, let's, before we answer the question, let's take a look at what we have here. These marks on the triangle, what, what do these two, what do the marks tell us about point O? It bisects DE. It bisects DE. And what's another way of saying point O bisects DE? It is the midpoint. So that's a midpoint. These two things being congruent tells us point M is the midpoint. These two being congruent tells us N is midpoint. So all of these segments, what would we call each of those segments? A mid-segment. Each of these is a mid-segment. So we have three mid-segments because we can join the, the, the um, midpoints of the sides three different ways. All right, so let's pick, let's pick this top side of the triangle here, DE is parallel to which other segment if that's if we have mid segments there mn and let's do this left hand side df what side is side df going to be parallel to parallel segment on and then finally we have side FE, and that's going to be parallel to which segment? OM. And all three of these, MN, ON, and OM, these three are mid-segments. Because they're the segments that go between the middle of two of the other sides. 
the midpoint, the middle. All right, we good there? Pretty, pretty easy idea. Let's look at another example. This time we'll look at some lengths. And I'm going to draw my points here. Uh, and I'm going to say, call these S, G, <coughs> R, H, T, and K. And I'm going to, th for this problem, we're going to say that G, H, K are midpoints. So instead of marking the figure, this time the problem tells us the midpoints. So what do we know about these shorter segments inside the triangle? What kind of segments are they? They're mid-segments. They go between these midpoints. So they're mid-segments. All right, I'm going to tell you some lengths. RS is 28. GH is 20. And RH is 22. Not necessarily to scale here. Um, then we want to know how long R. First, let's look at segment KH. Well, here's KH. Let's highlight these things. There's KH. So, which side, which which side of the triangle we're going to be looking at to figure out how long segment KH is? Which, which side of the triangle is this related to? SR, right? So we're going to relate those two. Well, SR is, or RS is 28 units long. So how long is KH going to be? 14. You divide this by 2 to get this. So this is going to be 14. <coughs> All right, let's look at another one. Um, GH. Uh, where is GH? Let's highlight that. I'll highlight that one in blue. There's GH. To which side of the triangle is that going to be related to? ST. And we know it's parallel to that side. And we know that their lengths are related in a nice easy way. Well, GH is 20. And so the question then is going to ask us how long is ST? So if this is 20, how long is this piece going to be? What is it? 40. Twice as long. So ST equals 40. <coughs> and then finally, the question asks us how long is GK? Well, let's highlight GK in green there. There's GK. So what side of the triangle is GK related to? RT. And the problem tells us that RS, or sorry, uh, RH, is 22. Now we could do this a couple of different ways. If RH is 22, how long is GK going to be? It has to be the same, right? Because this whole side, you could also look at it this way, that whole side is how long? From R to T. 44, right? This is half of it. This only goes from here to here. We know H is a midpoint. So that means that to find GK, you divide that in half. So that has to be 22. And if we we know that RH is half of that that side RT, so it's 22. RH is 22, so GK also has to be 22. So we can do it either way. Either way it works. Questions on that example? Okay. 
let's look at one more. This time we'll have to do, we always like to put a, a variable in our problems in math. So let's do one problem where we have a variable. There's my triangle. And I'm going to, my point was off there a little bit. So, go. Uh, and I'm going to call this length 38 and this length x plus 2. And I'm going to do this. And we want to find x. So what do the little tick marks on the sides tell us? They're congruent. These two are congruent, and those two are congruent. So what does, what does that tell us about these points? They're the midpoints, right? So if those two points are the midpoints, what would we call segment x plus 2? What kind of segment is that? That's our mid-segment. joins the midpoints. So how if x plus 2 and is the mid-segment, how is it related to this length? It's half as long. Well, 32 or 38 divided by 2 is what? Equals 19. So I divide that in half, and that has to equal the length of the mid-segment. X plus 2 equals 19, right? That's half as long as a big side. So subtract 2, this is easy. X equals 7. And we're done. Could I have set that problem up in a different way? Is there another way I could set that one up? So the other way that I, I thought of, so what do I have to do to x plus 2 to get 38? Multiply it by 2. So I could say 2 times x plus 2 equals 38. Multiply the mid-segment by 2 to get the longer side. And then I could distribute. So I get 2x plus 4 equals 38. I'm just going to go about it a different way. So 2x equals 34 divided by 2 and x equals 17. Can do it that way as well. Doesn't either way works. Questions on that example? Okay, so that's our big idea for this first section. Mid segments. Mid segments join the midpoints of two sides. Parallel to the third side and half as long. That's, that's our, our big idea. All right. One more. I will 